The strides made by Banyana Banyana continue to be celebrated in the country. It's also once again put the spotlight on women in sport and their unfair treatment. The team went into the FIFA Women's World Cup unhappy about financial issues, but they were not the only ones. Nigeria's national women's team has similar issues, and Spain went on to win the prestigious trophy, but their celebration has been tainted by the behavior of the head of Spain Football Federation, who kissed the player. So there's also issues of uh, sexual harassment and all this plays a major role on women's mental health and to unpack the issues more we're joined by clinical psychologist Dr. Koke Jo Tsebe. Dr. Tsebe, good afternoon to you and thanks so much for coming into studio. I mean when you when you're playing at your um, peak at the echelons of uh, your your career I suppose the pressure is even harder or does it come from uh, entry level as well where women are pressured be it uh, uh, you know sexual harassment or being objectified uh, in, in in sport in particular your view all right uh, good afternoon to you Cindy and to the viewers of course uh, you mentioned uh, multiple factors that include the existing inequalities and the pressure also and, um, there's no any better way to speak about it uh, other than acknowledging the socio-political aspect thereof uh, of um, globally where women in sport lies and also that the higher you go the higher performance comes with a lot of pressure pressure to, to compete but also pressure to to also prove yourself as a woman as a woman that how capable are you or do you also deserve equal treatment uh, fairness in payment but we've, we've come a long way, um, mm -hmm. and, and especially in the inclusion of women in various sectors that had been traditionally male-dominated. There is now even a concerted effort to formalize the sporting codes um, and also to, to have a salary parity so that we paid equally for, for the same job done. You, you speak about the importance of the mental health and wellness of women in sport in that this is what will position you um, and also give you the longevity. How fragile or how, you know, how much effort is being put into and resources in ensuring that there is that um, kind of support for women in sport when it comes to mental health? Well, Cindy, it's a work in progress. I think there have been considerable supports and improvements, but I think more work still needs to be done. Uh, I tell you what, there's still a limited number of teams in the country that have psychologists. Uh, primarily because more attention and focus and interest is placed on the physical aspect of performance and somewhat uh, putting the mental health at a peripher peripheral level, uh, which becomes a feedback to say, although there's a, some sense of acknowledgement and appreciation of where mental health in sports is, uh, it's at the moment there's still more to be done. And it's also important, Cindy, to acknowledge perhaps the hindrance, what limits the growth of mental health, is it also factors such as the stigma centered around mental health or also because naturally mental health is not a more of a physical you can see it uh, the level of um, treatment modalities and they're more therapeutic maybe also society is not yet there but which then is a feedback to us at the academic and practitioners and also the political will to say that let's also work together to destigmatize mental health and more appreciate and promote it more because i tell you what cindy it does also play a role uh, to safeguard and promote the mental well-being of women yeah in sports. is it more about mental health or rather having the mechanisms to cope with the dynamics of your work environment you were talking about the high pressure and looking at banyana banyana from the get-go, before they even went into the World Cup, there was the issue of payment and a, uh, you know, a, a, a Team B or whatever being introduced to replace them as if the, the, the Banyana Banyana is just dispensable. So are these more your, your challenges around the workspace or is it an issue of underlying mental illnesses that we, we're talking about? Um, multiple factors does also impede or impact the general mental health of uh, women in sports or women athletes. Um, you acknowledge about if there's any other organizational matters that will also impact. And um, look, it's also important to also highlight how mental he health plays a role. You spoke about the pressure and the coping techniques. The more you play higher in high performance, uh, the susceptibility or vulnerability for athletes to experience mental health conditions because of the demands it comes with and also that at times it triggers certain uh, unresolved issues. You become exposed to higher competition. There's a lot of invested interest 
Yeah, and I know we throw around the term mental health uh, quite generically or loosely, and there are different types of uh, conditions, you know, bipolar, and mm -hmm. that could maybe manifest into depression, or there's anxiety, uh, or, or a sense of be it uh, perceived or real risk of feeling that for some reason the, the world is against you. So I, I wouldn't be able to tell you what the symptoms are, but for somebody who's going through those, um, in, in a professional space like uh, soccer, for example, uh, are there early detections? Are there ways of you know, determining if a particular player has this condition and what kind of support is there? There isn't much, but I can indicate to you, uh, Cindy, what can be, how the approach could be on how to do early detections. Uh, firstly, primarily is to introduce and promote mental health in the team, the football fraternity, which would make it easy or also encourage at least to be able to open up to say, if you're not feeling well, if you're having a low mood, it's an indication that you're not feeling okay. Maybe then it's an indication that you need to seek help. And um, also maybe there's emotional difficulties within a team. It also gives you feedback as well. So coaches and team management also needs to become aware and be open to it. Therefore, it would be more of a proactive and also having sessions around different discussions around uh, mental health in sports. Maybe are we speaking about um, how to manage defeats and um, many other important key issues. By so doing, Cindy, it, you introduce more of a proactive approach rather than being reactive. We've seen how it has been. We've been more reactive around this. Whenever there's issues, okay, there will be a coverage to that. How important is that? The different approach could be be proactive, introduce mental health awareness, campaigns, proactive activities. Yes, and before we let you go as we wrap up Women's Month, just the importance of a positive affirmation and maintaining you know, your vulnerability and openness to say the world conspires uh, mm. for, for your good, that it's not all bad, albeit uh, that there are a lot of challenges that we face. Mm, very important um, to be um, grateful, a sense of gratitude to affirm yourself. I think most often we live in a country and also a world where it's results driven. And if you look at it, um, picking yourself up and affirming yourself on little things, these are building blocks, it's, but it's like building a puzzle to be grateful as you track your records or your progress. And also don't be hard on yourself. As I said, the results driven world somehow at times makes one, people to become discouraged about their progress and not acknowledge the little impact and progress they're making. Dr. Tsebe, thank you. Thank you so uh, thank much you for having for coming me. In this afternoon, we're joined by Dr. Tsebe, who um, is reflecting on the importance of uh, maintaining a healthy mental health balance, especially when it comes to high performance areas such as sport, and uh, to just be aware of where you are in your journey and to be kind uh, to yourself and celebrate those small victories.